The Death Mage Who Doesn't Want a Fourth Time Appendix 2 Monster Explanation, Ranks, and More This is a simple explanation of the monsters, collectively known to the Adventurer's Guild, Mage's Guild, and Tamer's Guild, as well as a reference for how powerful each rank of monster is. This information can be found in the reference room of each guild. Notes 1. Those referred to as average people in this explanation are people with creation-oriented jobs, such as farmer or blacksmith, with average attribute values. This does not include those such as retired soldiers and knights, or chefs who were once part of a special forces unit. 2. It must not be forgotten that monster ranks are simply one reference for determining how threatening and powerful a monster is in battle. If you are a heavy shield bearer capable of beating a rank 7 earth dragon to death, you can still be defeated by a rank 5 wyvern that flies freely in the sky. This is the nature of battles against monsters. 3. The way an adventurer's guild treats Vita's races with monster ancestry varies depending on which country and region the guild is located in. In the western region of the Bongaya continent, where the Amid Empire lies, they are treated as targets to be exterminated. But because friendly tribes are acknowledged as having human rights in the Orbom kingdom, causing them harm is a crime that carries punishment possibly as severe as execution or enslavement. One must be wary of this when traveling to other countries and other continents. Also, the rank values of Vita's races are determined by their race, but as they can acquire jobs like humans, it is dangerous to estimate their strength through their rank alone. Humans in Relations to Monsters Monsters were created by the demon king Gurudanis and the evil gods who were his subordinates in order to fight. Because of this, humans are efficient sources of experience points as well as sources of food. This is why monsters assertively try to harm humans. However, now that the demon king is dead, there are many exceptions to this. With the exception of monsters with low intelligence, such as goblins, Weak rank 1 to 2 monsters are aware that humans are stronger than them. When humans have greater numbers or appear stronger than them, they often flee. Humans are insufficient as a source of experience points for monsters above rank 7, and the other monsters that they normally prey on taste better. Because of this, they do not willingly attack normal people. However, demi-human type monsters attack and kidnap humans for reasons other than experience points and food, even if their ranks are higher. There are also monsters that do not prey directly on humans, such as ants. Some races of these monsters are harmless to approach, as they are almost completely uninterested in humans. Also, the experience points that can be gained from killing a human is proportional to the total amount of experience points that human has gained. So, a legendary craftsman who has experienced numerous jobs would be desirable prey for a high rank monster, even though he is an average person. However, as monsters have no way of identifying such people, there are almost no cases where they are targeted and killed. Devil's Nests and Dungeons in Relation to Monsters Thick mana floats in the air of the Devil's Nests and Dungeons, providing comfortable conditions for monsters to live in. Also, monsters breed and develop remarkably faster inside Devil's Nests and Dungeons. This effect is so drastic that ghouls would be unable to reproduce outside of Devil's Nests. Because of this, monsters that inhabit devil's nests and dungeons do not leave them willingly. Monsters that leave devil's nests and dungeons are those that cannot find prey or those that have been defeated in territorial conflicts. Most monsters above rank 5 do not find themselves in such circumstances. Demi-human type monsters are an exception to this.
There are frequent cases of these monsters leaving their devil's nests to plunder human goods and humans themselves. Other exceptions include great rampages, where monsters overflow from devil's nests and dungeons due to overpopulation and the appearance of a king. Regarding taming, monsters can be tamed, causing them to become allies of humans. The taming skill originates from Nine Lord, the champion chosen by Shizarion, the god of art. Taming uses some magical power, empathy, and feelings of trust to form bonds with the target monster. Taming is a broad term that includes things like spells that summon monsters and spiritual magic spells that make spirits cooperate with the caster. Because of this, the difficulty of taming a monster is dependent on the tamer's affinity with the target monster as well as his individual ability. It is said that demi-human-type monsters with similar senses and biology to humans, such as goblins, kobolds, orcs, and ogres, are relatively easier to tame. Elves have good affinity with spirits, dwarves with monsters that live in the earth, and beast people with beast-type monsters that are similar to them. However, it is said that taming monsters whose mental structure, morals, and biology are too different are effectively impossible to tame. It is said that insectoid monsters cannot be tamed due to their vastly different mental structures and biology, while undead cannot be tamed due to the vast gap between the dead and the living. Also, plant-type monsters such as ants, monster plants, and walking mushrooms are not impossible to tame, but as they have different sensory organs to humans, it is difficult to tame them no matter what rank they are. The exception to this rule is members of Vida's races that originate from monsters. Though their senses and mental structures are similar to humans, they are generally difficult to tame. Rank 1. Monsters that interfere with people's activities, like farming and fishing, rather than actually being a threat. Their strength, or rather their weakness, is such that an average person wielding a hoe could beat them to death. Most do not possess skills or special abilities. One would not likely be killed by such a monster unless they possess a very weak constitution or were actively making an effort to be killed. Rank 1 monsters appear commonly in normal forests, plains, rivers, and oceans that are not devil's nests. Nobody would send a request to the Adventurers Guild over a few of these monsters appearing. Young men of farming villages armed with rods can exterminate them by chasing them down or at least drive them away. However, they produce almost no material of economic value. An exception is horned rabbits, which provide fur and meat. The chance that a magic stone can be taken from their bodies is about one in a hundred, and even if one is blessed with luck to find one, the pebble-sized magic stone would sell for an amount equivalent to a child's allowance. The Adventurer's Guild reward for exterminating these monsters is so low that killing five of them would barely pay for a night without meals in a cheap inn. The main monsters of this rank are horned rabbits, goblins that steal livestock and crops, living dead and living bones. If one would have a tough time defeating a monster of this rank, it would probably be best to give up on being an adventurer. Taming these monsters is simple as long as the tamer has the skill. If a tamer finds this difficult, he either has extremely poor compatibility with the monster, or he should redo his training. The tamer's guild does not accept those who cannot tame monsters of this rank, not even as apprentices. Rank 2 Monsters about as threatening as dangerous beasts, such as wolves. A single monster of this rank can be exterminated by several armed average people or hunters, or a single average soldier or E-class adventurer. It is a little rare for rank 2 monsters to appear near towns or villages that have no devil's nests nearby. 
When more than a few of these monsters appear, a request is often sent to the Adventurers Guild. However, they appear quite frequently on highways more than a few hours' walk away from areas inhabited by humans. Rank 2 monsters generally don't use magic or martial skills, but as they sometimes use poison, caution is necessary. When defeated, they yield materials that can be used for alchemy or arms, depending on the race of the monster, and these can be sold for a considerable amount of profit. Around one in five rank two monsters drop a magic stone, the size of a fingernail of the pinky finger, which can be sold at a price that would pay for a night without meals at a cheap inn. Even if a magic stone is not found, the Adventurer's Guild pays around the same amount in reward money. However, it is difficult to maintain an adventurer's lifestyle by only hunting monsters of this rank. The main monsters of this rank are goblin soldiers, kobolds, sahagins, which are human-sized fish torsos with arms and legs, walking mushrooms, zombies, skeletons, and bone animals. They are moderately difficult to tame, but if one possesses a considerable level in the training and taming skills, they should not fail. Being able to tame a monster of this rank finally makes one an apprentice at the Tamer's Guild. Rank 3. Dangerous Beasts That Endanger Lives Whenever They Appear They are about as threatening as brown bears. With over a dozen fully armed, average people surrounding such a monster, they might be able to drive it away, but casualties would be unavoidable. Most can be defeated by several average soldiers, a single knight, a party of average E-class adventurers, or a single D-class adventurer. However, demi-human type monsters often have subordinates following them, so caution is required. These monsters almost never appear in towns or villages unless a devil's nest is very close by. This is because even the monsters know that facing large numbers of humans alone and escaping unharmed would be impossible. On rare occasions, they can also appear outside of devil's nests in fields far from town. Also, there are intelligent monsters at this rank that are capable of creating strategies such as raiding villages and towns and making quick retreats. They also appear on rare occasions on highways. However, one can commonly hear stories of traveling merchants and pilgrims who do not hire escorts or pay the fare for a group carriage travel only to lose their lives to monsters of this rank. To put it plainly, it is rare but common at the same time. Many rank 3 monsters possess one or more special abilities or skills related to magic or combat. They are considerably more dangerous than rank 2 monsters. Continuing to be an adventurer depends entirely on whether one can become strong enough to defeat monsters of this rank alone. Around one in three monsters of this rank drop a magic stone the size of the tip of a thumb, which can be sold to buy several nights stay at an average inn with two meals a day. Also, other than goblins, monsters of this rank possess some materials of value. One could live for several days off the money gained from selling these. However, as the meat of a single orc or huge boar weighs over a hundred kilograms, transporting it alone is often difficult, so many adventurers simply take the magic stones and the most valuable parts to sell. The main monsters of this rank are orcs, huge boars, impaler bulls, poison mushrooms, ghosts, living armors, zombie soldiers, skeleton soldiers, and bone beasts. Being able to tame monsters of this rank allows one to be acknowledged as a member of the Tamer's Guild and accept work as a tamer. Rank 4. Monsters that would one-sidedly slaughter even a hundred average people. Even with over a dozen average soldiers, one monster of this rank would take around a third of them down with it. Even a knight would struggle on his own. An E-class adventurer party would likely be annihilated by one rank 4 monster. 
Several inexperienced D-class adventurers, or a single veteran one would be able to defeat one. In Earth's terms, it is about as threatening as a Tyrannosaurus rex. A small village with a population between 100 and 200 would have a high chance of suffering devastating damage from one of these monsters attacking it. If a monster of this rank appears in a normal plain with no nearby devil's nest or dungeons, or in the middle of a town, it is either an omen of an upcoming monster rampage, or it can be assumed to be the evil deed of a summoner or tamer. It is rare for these monsters to appear on highways, but not unheard of. Defeating monsters of this rank yields a magic stone, unless very unlucky. Also, they often possess multiple parts that make for valuable materials. If including the reward fee for killing the monster, defeating a single rank 4 monster would result in payment, sufficient for the living costs of an entire party for a day. However, most independent D-class adventurer parties aim to hunt multiple monsters of this rank each day. This allows them to pay necessary expenses, such as living costs and buying equipment, while saving a meager amount. Equipment for fighting monsters is considerably expensive. The main monsters of this rank are mad boars, ogres, and bullet turtles. The Tamer's Guild considers those able to tame monsters of this rank to be competent. Rank 5 for monsters of this rank and above, average people are nothing but food, toys to be crushed, and sources of experience points. Normal soldiers would suffer great casualties fighting a monster of this rank. Multiple knights would be needed to face a rank 5 monster. It is possible for a veteran party of D-class adventurers aiming for a promotion or a single C-class adventurer to defeat such a monster. If a monster of this rank were to appear near a place inhabited by humans, even a large village of 500 would not be able to avoid taking devastating losses. Even a town with a population between a thousand and two thousand would take considerable damage. Rank 5 monsters almost never appear on highways, but there are several unlucky encounters with them reported every year. Monsters of this rank are sometimes in the ruling positions of extremely small devil's nests. A hundred percent of rank five monsters yield magic stones. Also, defeating a single one and selling all of the materials gained would result in enough profit for an average person to live in a village for a whole year, assuming he owns a house. Adventurers who can stably hunt monsters of this rank have no problems living a basic lifestyle as long as they do not spend excessive amounts on equipment and leisurely activities. The most famous monster of this rank is the wyvern. Those able to tame monsters of this rank are considered first-rate tamers by the Tamers Guild and have the path of becoming one of its leaders open to them. Even if this is not desired, such capable people can become honorary leaders. Rank 6 Average soldiers would serve as little more than a meat shield against a monster of this rank. Even knights would not be able to stand against a monster of this rank unless they were above average in ability. A party of C-class adventurers or a single adventurer capable of realistically aiming for B-class status is necessary to exterminate one of these monsters. If one of these monsters were to appear near a land-cultivating village, cancellation of cultivation activities would seriously need to be considered. Many small devil's nests do not contain any monsters of this rank. In medium-sized devil's nests, these monsters would live deep within, so it would be difficult to find them. One would have to be hopelessly unlucky to encounter a monster of this rank on a highway. Defeating one of these monsters and selling all materials, including the magic stone, along with the extermination reward, would yield a sum of money for an average person and his family to live for an entire year. 
Those capable of taming monsters of this rank would be considered candidates to become a guildmaster of a branch of the Tamer's Guild, as long as they possessed the skills needed to manage it. They would also be taken notice of by the nation. Rank 7 Multiple C-class adventurer parties or a B-class adventurer is needed to defeat a monster of this rank. If no such adventurers are present, the loss of an entire town must be prepared for. From this rank onwards, the ratio of monsters that are designated as disasters increases. Many medium-sized devil's nests do not have a single one of these monsters, and they can only be found in the depths of large devil's nests. Those capable of defeating monsters of this rank alone are considered as candidates to become heroes, and the magic stone and materials of such monsters sells for sizable fortunes, enough to purchase a newly constructed, fully furnished house in a town. The monster that is famous among rank 7 monsters is the Earth Dragon. Only the elite can tame a monster of this rank, there are cases where people capable of this are invited to meals to discuss offers of work with noblemen and wealthy merchants. Rank 8. A party of B-class adventurers or a superhuman capable of becoming an A-class adventurer is required to exterminate monsters of this rank. Without such adventurers, the loss of thousands of lives must be prepared for. This can possibly cause the ruin of an entire small city-state. Those capable of defeating monsters of this rank alone are considered heroes, and the magic stones and materials of such monsters sell for fortunes sufficient to purchase small mansions with high-quality furniture and magic items. The monster that is famous among rank 8 monsters is the Rock Dragon. Those capable of taming monsters of this rank can leave their names behind in the Tamer's Guild history as masters of the art. Nations would try to build connections with, or place a collar on, such people, as such people wandering freely would be considered dangerous individuals anywhere they go. Rank 9 a party of exceptional B-class adventurers or a single A-class adventurer is required to exterminate monsters of this rank. Without such adventurers, there is only despair. It would be strange for a rank 9 monster to be incapable of destroying a small city-state. It is rare for monsters of this rank to be discovered even in large devil's nests. Once they are found, the Adventurer Guild sends out an extermination request. As for dungeons, monsters of this rank are only found in B-class dungeons, or the only two A-class dungeons that have been confirmed to exist in the Bon Gaia continent. The magic stones and materials of monsters of this rank and above generally cannot be sold immediately and have to be put up for auction. Because of this, their monetary value is not stable, but they always sell for large fortunes. Only heroes who have left their names behind in history have been able to tame monsters of this rank. Rank 10 and above. A hero is required to exterminate monsters of these ranks. Without a hero, the only option is to pray and flee. If they appear in areas inhabited by humans, even a large country will suffer losses of a historic scale if they do not deal with them correctly. Smaller countries surviving the appearance of such monsters would be considered a miraculous event that would be remembered in history. Monsters of these ranks can only be found in A-class dungeons or the legendary S-class dungeons that are said to exist in the southern reaches of the Bon Gaia continent and in the ruins of the Demon King's palace. The reward for defeating such monsters is a sum of money that the average adventurer cannot even imagine. Events commonly heard in legendary folk songs, such as the hero taking the princess's hand in marriage, is also possible. Generally, things that have a price put on them can be bought. The materials become ingredients for creating upper-class and legendary-class items. Monsters of these ranks are also those that appear in legends. 
This includes superior dragon races such as storm dragons, arc demons, nightmare krakens, and the familiar spirits of gods. There is no record of monsters of these ranks being tamed by anyone other than the champion Nine Lord. Incidentally, the champion Bellwood was said to have defeated monsters of these ranks with ease. Rank 13 and above. A hero among heroes, or someone who a superhuman would consider a superhuman would be needed to exterminate monsters of these ranks. If such people are not present, one cannot be blamed for abandoning all hope in this world. Such monstrosities would influence the fate of not only large nations, but entire continents. Even a party of A-class adventurers could be wiped out by a monster of these ranks. A party would become not only a legend, but a myth if they defeated such a monster. A god's familiar spirit might even descend upon the world to invite them to join the gods. The only one who has defeated such a monster on his own in recent times is the Amid Empire's S-class adventurer, the Thunderclap Schneider. The materials that could be harvested from monsters of these ranks would become ingredients to create legendary class and mythical class magic items. Whether they can actually be created is another problem entirely, however. Astronomical sums of money change hands in the trade of such materials, and it is natural for even unprocessed materials to be acknowledged as national treasures. Monsters of these ranks are those that appear in myths. This includes the weakest of the evil gods as well as elder dragons, true colossi, beast kings, and purebreed vampires. Of course, nobody in the history of Lambda has ever tamed such monsters. <laughs>